Hello, my name is Megan Holtzman. I'm with the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering. And my poster talk today is about my research with sensors, ambient sensors in an environment in palliative care. So we've looked at putting sensors into palliative care under the bed mattresses. We've put 24 pressure sensors in order to monitor people comfortably in a way that won't interfere with their comfort. And we were the first time we, ever we've had this study going where we've been able to monitor palliative care patients at the end of life. What we found from that is that we can monitor how much they're in bed, how much they're moving in bed, and getting their respiration and breathing signals out. And from that, we're looking at predictors of mortality. And do we know, can we tell from the respiration signals that within the next couple of weeks, these person will die? And can we then be able to make better decisions of transferring them home or not based on that fact? Hi, I'm Alan Abel Spinks, and I'm with the Department of Computer Engineering at Carleton University. And this is my thesis called Towards Personalized, Towards Personalized Interactomes. And basically what that means is that when you're given an individual's uh, sequenced genome, so their list of genes that they have in their body, um, we want to be able to predict the effects that an individual's mutations have on the protein interactions. And how does it work in terms of big data? Um, so to kind of build this system, we need a lot of input data, so a lot of individuals' um, sequence genomes to test, to test our system and to build our system. And there's a project called the Thousand Genomes, which uh, has sequenced and made available a bunch of anonymous individuals' sequence data. Uh, and this total is about 125 terabytes. Um, which is a pretty huge amount, huge amount of data. So we, we need to operate on this and identify um, kind of key mutations and things we'd like to test against and use this as a, as a system to build our, um, our own system. Uh, hi, my name is Alex Diaz and I am a graduate student at Carleton. I'm currently studying statistics and I did a project on analyzing National Hockey League play-by-play -play data. So the National Hockey League keeps track of all sorts of plays that go on during the game. These plays are defined as stuff like face-offs, uh, periods beginning and ending, shots, shot blocks, penalties, goals, and all this sort of fun stuff. And I decided to, uh, to take a look at some of the most important events and see what kind of information I could get out of it. So one of the big, uh, one of the big arguments right now is in the NHL is whether or not we can measure a team's success based on how long they possess the puck. So the NHL doesn't really track this, but luckily we can track shots for and shots against. And there's a pretty good relationship that says if your team takes more shots than they have shots against them, then they probably have the puck more often and they're probably more successful. So this is essentially what I looked at. And I found that the relationship in general holds across the league. So I've got some graphs up here and in them you can see that teams that have the puck a higher percentage of the time tend to, tend to earn more points over the course of the year and the teams that earn more points tend to get into the playoffs and win championships.